Hi there, my name is John Rackage. Welcome to the ninth annual Location Managers Guild International Hollywood Location Scouts panel, once again, part of Comic-Con at Home. We are the people who work with the director and the production designer to figure out how the story can be created here in the real world. Before we get too far, let's start things off with a quick sizzle reel that showcases the work of our panel with transitions between our original location scout photos and the final scenes in the movies and shows we worked on. Hollywood ain't that far. You could give showbiz a shot for yourself. You got the look. the following companies that sponsored our guild's participation at Comic-Con. The Big Bear Lake Film Office assists filmmakers with permitting and location needs while filming in Big Bear Lake. Inland Empire Film Services assists with city, county, and federal film permits in San Bernardino and Riverside counties. The Riverside County Film Commission helps us in finding filming locations and they manage filming at country-owned properties. And the Temecula Film Office assists film, assists film productions with permits and locations in and around the city of Temecula. So our, our past panels have featured several location manager members of the LMGI from all over the world. And this time again, we have international representation from the UK, both coasts of Canada, as well as various parts of the United States. We're gonna go down the line with some brief introductions of, of who we each are and how we all got into this. I myself am from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I've been in locations for over 20 years, mostly working in Toronto. I started off as an office production assistant and fell my way into locations as a scout and now a manager. I've worked on TV shows and movies, uh, most of the Resident Evil franchises, Pixels, Shadowhunters, American Gods, and currently C for Apple TV+. Uh, Evan? Um, 
My name is Evan. I'm from Vancouver, BC, um, Canada, and I've been in the business for about 16 years. I started as a production assistant and worked my way to becoming a location scout. I had a chance to work with a variety of different location managers um, all in the lower mainland and uh, been lucky enough to work on various different shows. Um, if you're The Walking Dead, Legion, X-Files, Supernatural, and I love my job. Um, everywhere I go, people tell me I have the coolest job in the world. And I probably, I lost count how many times I've heard that. And it really is fun. It's nice meeting people and um, yeah, I love what I do. Great, uh, Stacey. Hi, I'm Stacey Jang and um, I've been doing this for about 25 years um, in the Bay Area. And basically um, I got into um, film, you know, I, I was a kid that grew up in Chinatown in San Francisco. And um, so I, I'm fluent in three different dialects in Chinese. And um, I happened to be at a friend's house, um, you know, that were full of, you know, film people. And uh, there was a locations manager that came up to me and just, you know, said, oh, you speak, you know, you're bilingual. And I was like, yes, I am. He said, meet me in an alley on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. And, you know, like, um, I, I'd like you to help me with the location. And I was like, oh, who is this guy? <laughs> so my <laughs> validated him it was fine and um she said he's a locations manager he's legit so go ahead and meet him so I met him and he said I want to close this alley um and I want to make it rain and you know and block everybody's driveway so I was like okay how do I do that so he kind of walked me through it a little bit and that's how I got into locations and I've been doing it for like you know like probably 20 years out of 25 years so wow uh, Tisha. Hi, my name is Taisha Jefferson. I'm a location scout in the, primarily in the Los Angeles area. However, I have ventured out into uh, upstate New York and also Philadelphia to add to the list. Um, I've been doing this for approximately 16 or 17 years. Prior to working in the industry directly, I used to work at a, the film permit office for the city of Los Angeles, which is called Film LA. I used to be on the other side issuing the film permits and working through the logistics and trying to figure it out on that end. And that interest drew me closer to hopping in full circle to joining the entertainment industry directly as a scout. So I've been enjoying what I'm doing and meeting lots of great people and exposing myself to different cultures and to different aspects of it as we do have a fascinating job where we get to go everywhere and meet everyone. So I greatly enjoy it. Uh, Emma Jane. Uh, hi, yes, my name is Emma Jane and on the floor everyone calls me EJ because you know. <laughs> um, I'm from South Wales in the UK and uh, I mostly work around London and the Southeast, but I've worked all over the UK now, apart from Scotland. And um, yeah, I've been in the business about seven years, but I came from a sort of film and TV making background a long time ago. I used to be a TV presenter in uh, South Wales, famous in Wales and Wales only. <laughs> and then uh, I came up to London to uh, seek my fortune and it took me quite a long time uh, to figure out how to get into the film industry and locations is where I landed up. Uh, so I think it was the combination of uh, photography and having done similar, uh, actually I worked at the permitting office as well. I spent a couple of years learning how to close the biggest roads. So I, I supported quite a lot of different amazing movies like Mission Impossible and Bond and went on set and thought, oh yeah, I need to get out here. So um, yeah. I then uh, started working in about 2014. I worked as a location assistant and, and very quickly sort of worked my way up from there. I'm a supervising location manager at the moment on an HBO Sky production called The Baby, which is thrilling. So yeah, it's a really great new project, new TV show coming out uh, at the end of this year, beginning of the next year. So uh, filming starts now. <laughs> and uh, Dodd. Uh, my name is Dodd Vickers. I'm a location manager based in Atlanta, Georgia, but working wherever I'm called to work. I um, studied architecture, art, and photography in college and stumbled into the business a little later in life when a film showed up at my mother's farm and wanted to film a movie called um, uh, with Jennifer Aniston. Um, and the guy that was a location manager 
and I got to know each other over the course of the month. They were at my mother's home and he offered me a job and I told him to call me when he had a real job and he called me about two weeks later and I en ended up working with uh, several location managers on projects from Den of Thieves and Sharp Objects and Prisoners, uh, scouting and managing and been doing it for a little over a decade now. And as well, you actually host uh, the LMGI's wonderful Location on Two podcast. Let's not forget that. So everyone yes. should get a chance to, to check that out when they can. Locationsonto.com. So, so Dodd, can you give everyone a summary of what it is that we actually do? Like, what is the location scouting process? And what do we do during each of the stages of prep, filming, and wrap? So the location scout slash manager is usually one of the very early people hired in the creative process. So once a script is greenlit, and they know they want to go into production. Uh, in most cases, they have a production designer uh, hired, but in some cases they do not. But they, they do put a scout on the ground going to start finding the locations. And the first part of that is to get the script. Uh, once we receive a script, we go through the script, break it down, determine the locations that are featured in the, in the script. And uh, usually you can tell very quickly which are going to become the, the primary or anchor locations that the show will be based around. And once you start getting some feedback from the creative team as to the look for the specific locations and the production designer drives that, um, you start going out, meeting people, taking pictures, sending them back for feedback, consulting with the director, the production designer and the producers, um, getting the feedback they want on, is this the look they're looking for? Are they looking for something different? And then you start narrowing it down to a few core locations that they want to go visit in person. You'll set those visits up. They'll come walk around, walk through the scenes, determine whether or not that location works. And if it does, then we move into the actual prep phase of contracting the location, talking to the local municipalities, um, doing uh, contracts and insurance, um, hiring police, all of the practical things that go in with filming at that location. Um, obviously we have some limitations we have to take into consideration. It's not just go out into the world and find the location. Sometimes once the anchor location is selected or you know where your office is gonna be, we have travel limitations as far as moving the crew too far away from the office within a given day. So you have a zone you work in, typically about 30 miles as the crow flies from a center point trying to find all these locations. Um, then you might have other restrictions put on you like, okay, we only need a piece of a day at this location, but we're gonna spend most of the day at this location. So now you have to figure out if you can find something else nearby that fills that day. Um, so then during uh, the prep phase, you get it all set up, we go into production and we have a team. Uh, that's when you move into more of the management phase. We'll have a team of people, including yourself that are on location. You'll have someone out prepping for the next day's work or the next week's work while the day's filming is going on. You'll be there to be the interface between the public and the actual location or in the production team, uh, keeping the local neighbors or businesses content with the filming going on and being a good visitor in the neighborhood and winning them over to support the filming as opposed to working against you. Because it can be a bit invasive and uh, something of an inconvenience when a circus shows up in your front yard and takes over a neighborhood or a town. Um, we work with the police, security, locals to build that relationship and maintain it during filming. And then once filming is over, we want to make sure they see us returning the location back to the condition if as good or if not better than when we got there and leaving it with a good positive feeling so that anybody else, if one of these guys wants to come to town and film, they're not getting a, a negative response because they've had a bad experience. So we're trying to make the filming process fun for everybody and, and a positive experience, whether it's some people, it's just money. How much are you paying me? Others, it's being part of the show. So it's a, it's a more complex process than you can describe in five minutes, but that's a general summary of the overall um, process of, that we go through from selecting, shooting, and then wrapping a location. Yeah, that's. I had a mentor who taught me that it, I wasn't just a steward of this spot for now. I'm for the next other show that wants to come to town and use the same spot. You can't just be greedy and selfish and, and walk away and not make sure things are ready for. You want to be able to be invited back like a house guest. 
yeah, I, I always joke that I, I probably need to change the title of my business card to professional visitor. Yes. Um, because you, you do, you're like somebody that's come to visit at somebody's house and you want to make the bed and make sure you leave the room you're staying in as clean or better than when you got there. So you're welcome back. And I love, um, I mean, I hate it when I get told that they've had a negative experience and I meet some resistance when I'm talking to somebody about filming, but I love the opportunity to try and turn it around and show them how it's supposed to be done so that the next time somebody comes in, they're more welcoming and more open to it. Uh, Stacey, you've been able to work on some high profile, uh, big franchise movies. What are some of the additional challenges on projects like that that are and realistically so much bigger in scope and scale? Um, well, I would say, well, um, you know, kind of piggybacking on what, um, you know, um, you, were, you guys were talking about, I call us kind of like the uh, wedding planners, because <laughs> we bring in everything and, you know, we find everything and, you know, and, and we're basically the, the layer between the world and our, our, you know, our company. And, you know, so we get all the, you know, complaints and everything too, uh, and we've solved all the problems that we can. Um, the movies, you see, I would say basically um, the ones that, stick in my mind are ones that I learned probably earlier in my, you know, in, um, in the years. And um, I, like on, um, see, like on the Hulk, I worked on the Hulk, um, the, the Ang Lee one uh, in 2003. And I remember um, they tasked the two of us to go into a neighborhood. And um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges is going into a neighborhood and saying, you know, like, hi, you know, I'm Saisi and we're going to be coming in and, you know, doing this wonderful scene, this great cool scene with the Hulk breaking out of Treasure Island and then, you know, like tunneling his way through um, to, you know, to this, this little tiny, you know, this, um, intersection here in the middle of your street. <laughs> so what we're, you know, what we're going to do is like, um, as he, you know, um, he's going to have all these, uh, you know, helicopters hovering over us and we're going to have um, SWAT teams and, you know, police and uh, military and, and all their vehicles come in and they're going to like all gather and swarm in to try to contain him. So it sounds all cool and everything, but then the next thing we tell them is, so we're going to have to probably close your streets, um, block all your driveways and we're probably, we're asking if we can have SWAT team members and different, you know, background actors on your windows and rooftops because they wanted to fill those all in. So, so basically, you know, um, also, you know, like along with that, you know, with the helicopters hovering um, low, lower than normal, um, you know, the FAA requires us to um, vacate the front of each house. So, so we were trying to clear people like for a few blocks and do the scene. So um, I think that was one of our biggest challenges to be welcomed into a neighborhood and, you know, and, and for everybody to work with us. And that neighborhood, to, uh, you know, was like that street was a main thoroughway for like because it's on a steep hill and, um, and everybody, there are people that live in dead end streets and this is their only way out. So we had to work out a whole thing where, um, you know, we, we found them uh, parking, you know, alternative parking if they would work with us. And then we basically had to shuttle them. We shuttled them, we hired a shuttle company to shuttle them in and out. And it wasn't a small task. It was a pretty, big, it took us about two months to go, you know, to, to prep it. But in the end, you know, it was great because we had the producers saying that, you know, they were saying, oh, this is like filming in a back lot. So that was like the biggest, you know, compliment we can get. And then uh, we had a neighborhood that was happy with us. You know, of course, there's one or two people that really didn't, you know, care to have their normal day, you know, interrupted the way we did um, in a major way. <laughs> but um, other than that, you know, we were, we were left with, you know, like um, an, a location that was happy and, and, you know, thrilled and excited to see, you know, the movie, you know, come out. So, so that was, you know, one of the biggest challenges. So other than that, you know, like other movies like Contagion and, um, like, you know, uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp and like, uh, see San Andreas, you know, we did this, um, the aftermath of, of you know, uh, disaster movies. Those are pretty, you know, like um, task, tasking because 
we have to like block everybody again in their driveways and fill the front of their houses with debris, <laughs> like clean, we call it clean debris, but it's still debris. <laughs> so it looks like we trashed the neighborhood. So um, those have been, you know, the uh, pretty challenging, but fun. So, and I just finished working on um, Matrix 4. So that was another one <laughs> that we, we, you know, we took over a neighborhood, so. But these, those are, you know, they're fun, but you have to be a people person to really, you know, like work with people and build your relationships and trust with them. And like, you know, like you said, you know, be able to go back to those neighborhoods with the next one. So, and then welcome us. All right, now, isn't it always a main street they somehow end up picking? It's never some side street that we can, or cul-de-sac. <laughs> so it's the main, it's a one horse town and we want to be on the main highway. Yeah, we're always yeah, going yeah. to same the same place there's like some there's certain places that have been you know filmed over and over again and we understand when we come and they're like you've been here five times yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's just the you know scenery right it's the scenery so we tell them you live in a beautiful area of our or you know of, of our city so yeah. So Evan, you're based in Vancouver, Canada, and, and much like me, we're always working on projects that are based in other cities than the one we actually live in. Uh, what are your experiences working on American projects like that? And tell us about your scouting methods for finding locations to cheat other cities around the world. Um, having scouted for 12 years now, um, it's funny because I think I've only ever been on one production that was actually based in Vancouver. Everything else, it's always an American city. It's somewhere um, in another part of the world, but it's rarely ever Vancouver, which is unfortunate because I think Vancouver is a world-class city and I'd like to see it play itself more in future productions. So when an American production comes to town, there's usually, uh, we get a fair amount of time, depending on what production we're working on. Um, like Dodd was saying, scouts are usually the first ones on the ground working and finding places to meet the creative needs. So I'll start with a breakdown of a script if I can. So I know what's required, if it's day or night, what's the page counts. Um, that way it helps me determine the length of time we're gonna be at each location, which is a pretty important thing you gotta tell people. Depending on where you're going, some places may not be able to accommodate you for a very long period of time, like businesses that are in high operation. Um, it's highly unlikely they can let you take over for like a week or something if you need it so it's i get all the little details and when i get to the location i do the best i can to peel the band-aid off as one of my location managers would say and not downplay anything you want to be up front with everybody and let them know the impact and the footprint you're going to have because over the years i've heard a lot of different locations tell me that they've had a production go in and they downplayed everything. They go, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And then they show up and they wrap film trucks around the business and it basically kills their business for however long the film crew is there. And you basically burn the location for everybody in town. So I do the best I can to be upfront and honest about what we're looking to accomplish. And once, um, once I'm out there, um, depending on what show it is, like when I was working on Fear the Walking Dead and Supernatural, these are kind of darker shows. So they have content that may not necessarily be, uh, a lot of places may not like it. And I've actually had a few homeowners when I was on, I think it was Fear the Walking Dead, they turned us down because they didn't like zombies and they were afraid of the contents. They were afraid of seeing that in their home. So you do the best you can to be confidential, but at the end of the day, when you work on those types of productions, you do have to be a little upfront about the nature of what you're looking to do. Because the last thing you want to do is have a homeowner show up and go, well, I didn't know you guys are filming this in my, in, in my property because that's their home and you got to be respectful of that. Um, and like Dodd was saying, a lot of times the best locations are out of reach. You have an anchor location, and sometimes the best location may be across town in a very inconvenient spot. So that's when as a scout, you gotta be creative and find ways to get the pieces that they need within like a certain area that is your main area and where your circus is gonna be, where you have an anchor location. So it, it gets tricky. Um, luckily for us, the lower mainland, we have basically 
everything that you can ask for. We have cities, we have farms, we have small towns, we have mountains, we have lakes, we have an ocean. So we have a variety of looks. Um, the other challenge that we do have though is when there's a lot of productions in town, sometimes it can get tricky because people are booking everything and it's hard for you to be able to get a permit for a location because the city and rightfully so, they will only let, you, let film crews go into an area um, for so long and then they're gonna want some breathing room before they let another production in to make sure that people aren't exhausted from filming activity in their backyard. Um, so there are definitely um, a lot of different things that go into the scouting process. Um, for me, once I find out like what the basic look is because I've been doing it for long enough, I generally have an idea of places that I can go to accomplish what the production is looking for. And like Dot was saying, um, we get the designer involved and yeah, it, it's, it's very basic. It's a very basic explanation of what we do. Cool. I'll just say this. The, the one thing I always cringe when I see come across my desk is a Christmas movie. For those who don't know, Christmas movies are shot in July and August, never at Christmas time. It, it, literally, they film in the hottest point of the year, and we have to make it look like a snowy Christmas. And it's just absolutely nonsense. It's, it's people dying of heat exhaustion so they can look like they're going to the local gazebo to save the bakery whatever the plot is usually. So um, EJ, you're based out of the UK and you generally work on projects within your area in Europe. So for the audience out there who does not live in you know, LA or New York, uh, do you have any recommendations for how to start their film careers closer to home? Yeah, I mean, certainly over here in the UK, we are desperate for crew. So uh, if you're highly skilled in the job you're in and you'd like to change and switch, if you can use Excel and as all the everyone else, sort of all the panelists have talked about, if you've got great people skills, we need you. So come and join us. <laughs> it, didn't, it wasn't like that when I started. I felt like, oh, wow, I've, I've arrived and I'm going to have to like figure this out very, very quickly and not let on that I don't know what I'm doing or what, well, actually that's probably not how I work but um it did feel really like this was your one shot and you kind of had to grip on for dear life and stay in the game whereas now I just cannot believe the sheer amount of calls I get for projects so it's a really busy time so it's a great time to start finding out what locations is and and as people have so you know um brilliantly explained uh, it's such a varied job. It can be facilitating, it can be people skills, it can be Excel spreadsheets, organizing, you know, it's managing huge amounts of information, planning ahead, strategizing, you know, as well as being able to take a fantastic photograph and sell in a location because you've seen that it's got what the film needs or the project needs, you know. So if that sounds like you, then um, I've been teaching, which has been great, actually, because I've started to really find out how we can get people into the industry. So uh, I'm, I'm teaching at the National Film and Television School on and off. I've worked with people who were in uh, the armed forces. We got some funding together to teach a group of people that were leaving the forces and looking for alternative careers. Um, so we've taught a big bunch of people like twice now over the last year, uh, basic sort of set ready skills, you know, like from radio chatter to, um, you know, how to take a photograph, what kind of camera to use, you know, just like a real basic sort of setup. So you've got a kind of general overview of, of, of um, what we do. And I think courses like that, you know, they're starting to pick up because people want to be on them. People are paying for them. The National Film and Television School here in the UK also does a full kind of three month locations course where you become the location support on their kind of films. So, you know, the directors and whatnot that have been doing those courses for years, they started locations about two years ago and um, you can go and learn, learn there as well. Um, 
yeah, it's changing because there's education available. Um, we talked about uh, uh, one of our colleagues, Harriet Lawrence, who's based here in the UK. She runs something called the ALMT, so Assistant Location Managers Training, and that is fantastic. If you've already been on set and you've been a marshal, uh, you can go and work with Harriet and she will teach you everything. There are people who've done Harriet's courses over the years, and that's in partnership with either the Production Guild previously or Screen Skills or Location Collective, which is one of the agencies over here and they just kind of get funding together to get people trained up for that next level of location managing and um yeah uh, i mean what else is there i i think one of the key sort of um like roles here now at the moment where you can get a taste of whether it's for you is marshalling it's it's been a bit tricky like i'm all for letting the entire world know how it works and you should get in and um i think that's that was the hardest thing for me as well when i was when i was sort of 21 22 and left university left my film degree and just went uh where where is this industry you speak of you know like i was a fantastic ota filmmaker had absolutely no idea where the real industry actually lived and potted around making the most marvelous short films for a while but never really knew where it was you know and then eventually stumbled across some people who knew and i think it can be the same with marshalling it's it, there are ways that you can get in now there's lots of different organizations like um production guild screen skills that i just mentioned they can put you in touch with people now and it, you can just get on a couple of courses here and there and that'll um get you a sort of um foot in the door really and then you basically get added to a whatsapp group as far as i understand it and then uh, you're in because we need so many people to like lock off locations exactly what you guys have been talking about you know if you walk in we did we did it in cardiff which was amazing because we used all local crew which is in south wales and it was probably one of the biggest films to hit south wales we closed the entire kind of six lane highway to turn it into a uh, American police station, uh, very exciting, you know, uh, same like, hi guys, knock, 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 you know, I'm from Wales, so it kind of helped, you know, and I was like, we want to, um, you know, like fire guns and bring SWAT teams and oops, we've accident accidentally crashed into the traffic lights and oh no, like we can't get all of these people back into their block of flats. So we did a very similar thing. We had to have people kind of ferried in and out or park all their cars elsewhere and all that kind of stuff. And of course, Oh, the infrastructure required and the management and the organization required like needs so many great friendly people on the ground. So using local crew was amazing. You, using, you know, young Welsh people who wanted to see what it was like on set, putting a call out to like local colleges and through the local authority councils, things like that, to try to get people uh, involved in what we were doing. So it was great because everybody kind of knew the area and knew how to interact with people, you know, from the local you know, um, community, so that was really good. Um, so that's one of the ways we reach out to make sure we're bringing new talent into the industry as well. I think it's important as a location manager just to make sure that you're kind of connected to all of those agencies as well. So yeah, that's nothing like how I got in. I banged on doors, you know. <laughs> I took a couple of months off work because I was working at local authority as an education welfare officer and uh, decided that education wasn't for me and uh, went back to my first love to see if I could get into the industry somehow and just started ringing anybody I knew and asking if their fifth, sixth, seventh cousin knew anybody that was in the film industry. And I got a call and this chap phoned me up and he went, hi, uh, can you find me an ice rink? And I was like, probably. He was like, have you got a camera? I was like, yeah. He went, right call me back in a couple of hours when you've got some and that's basically how I got into the industry so I threw my number out everywhere and somebody eventually rang me back so yeah I did a bit of shoe leather to get in and once I was in I didn't let go and um yeah so perhaps that's the other thing I think locations is a particularly requires a particular kind of tenacity which I think I have so if you have that you'll probably be fine with the advice that I've just handed out but yeah call us get hold of us find us we need you thanks <laughs> Tasha, much like myself you've worked both on, on movies and tv shows in, in terms of our work as location professionals what do you find is the difference and which do you tend to prefer hmm Good question. Um, television is much faster. With um, TV, you probably get scripts. It's 
sometimes we get outlines in advance and we kind of know the particulars that we're looking for. But however, the scripts are constantly changing with television. Television is such a fast paced, fast paced lane, I would like to say. And um, you probably only get about seven days to scout or to put up an entire episode together. So it does take a, a lot of quick thinking, a lot of things in your back pocket to know, oh, there is a new bar that we are looking for and we need to shut the bar down on a Friday night. So that's a lot of quick talking and to try to get a nice bar to close down their revenue on a Friday night so that we can film for one time and, you know, most people don't like to lose their regulars, so to say. So it is a lot of persuasive thinking and <laughs> trying to get them on board with us um, in such a quick amount of time where they don't really have proper time to notify their records to let them know that, you know, hey, we're going to do a quick, going to take down, you know, one particular Friday, as opposed with a feature. Well, you have your script in advance. Certain things will change, but not very many things. And with the feature, you have time to walk it through, to do the research, to properly prep, to know every aspect of the community, of the area that you're taking a, a large crew into. And you get a chance to meet so many people that are there. And, you know, pre-COVID, you would even invite people to take a look at the things that you're doing, because we know that that's not an everyday occurrence um, for certain locations in certain areas. So for me, um, I like both, to be honest. I like the fast pace, but I do really enjoy getting the chance to really dig into the community and know what's there and get a chance to meet everyone, to bring them into our world or our side, to let them see what it is that we're actually doing. So I, I, I'm in the middle. I enjoy both. <laughs> So one of the great things about our jobs is that we get the opportunity to see some pretty unusual places. Uh, what are some of the adventurous or simply unique ones that you've all been able to see? What are some of the really truly wonderful things about this, the work that we get to do? Uh, open it up to whoever wants to jump in first. Well, I think, you know, like um, while scouting, I think we, we are like really fortunate because we get to see places that the public may not be, be able to get, you know, to, to, to tour. So like, I think I remember going to, um, uh, it, it was uh, Alcatraz actually. Mm -hmm. And they took us to areas that was not open to the public. It was kind of creepy, <laughs> but it was very interesting. And there was a lot of history um, you know, then th those are interesting places that we get to see. Um, also, you know, they tend to take us up like on, you know, uh, like there are, we have the um, four buildings called the um, Embarcaderos in San Francisco and they're super high buildings. They're like some of the high, like highest buildings and they have these catwalks on the, on the top and we're trying to get um, rooftop um, shots from you know all the buildings downtown in financial district for Godzilla and um, we, in, we were scouting there and I did not go out there but <laughs> my manager scout went out there and he he was it was he said it was a catwalk with no side railings and I was like okay <laughs> like the places like that were really interesting but it's beautiful the view is up up there was beautiful and we always get to see the most beautiful spots so yeah, I love, I, I filmed in a lot of small towns. And one of the things I try to make a point of doing is every little small town I go into, especially if it has the traditional courthouse with the clock tower, I always try to get to the, the highest point in there. And you find yourselves in that the behind the clock and looking out the windows and kind of the things you see in the old black and white movies, those things exist. That clock face with the sunlight coming through it and the gear works behind it. And then uh, there's a building here that's now very famous because of Stranger Things. The Hawkins Power and Light Building is an old building on Emory, which was a, a research center for mental health. And they used to have these tunnels underneath to other outbuildings where they could transport people that were criminally uh, incarcerated without taking them outside to go between the buildings. And that's one of the creepiest areas I've ever seen, but somewhere you would never get to go unless you were doing the job we do. And I think that's one of the fun parts is you do get to meet a lot of really interesting people doing jobs that you knew nothing about. 
and go to places that nobody else would normally get to go under the typical circumstances for sure. I think one of the ones for me that stands out is, I don't want to say the name of the place because they get enough people trying to break in and have a look. Um, so I think they'd appreciate it if I didn't mention the name, but we do have um, a mine here somewhere in the lower mainland. And when tourists go in, they're only allowed on the ground floor. Uh, there are little platforms and everything. And people usually stay on the platform and they stay on the ground level there is a staircase off to the side that takes you to one of the couple of the higher levels of this mine. And I always thought that it's the higher levels that look really interesting. And of course the public is not allowed to go there. So after scouting it and seeing all the really cool machinery and um, stuff that's on the higher levels and all the different little spots in that mine, I remember thinking maybe I should bring my family back one time and, just take a look, but then it would be very anticlimactic because I know that all the good stuff is not where they let people generally go and that you can only go to the higher levels if you're a scout or doing something for the mine. So I thought that, that, was, that that's always one of the ones that stand out the most. Mine's kind of weird. Like I remember working on uh, Jack Ryan, which came out in 2014 and we shot that in, um, London Underground in the disused uh, tube station near Waterloo. And um, what's extraordinary about that film is that we used the chimney behind, which kind of sucks all the fumes out of the underground and watching four SWAT guys kind of rope off and come down there. And then there's these huge walkways. There's all this kind of infrastructure that you have no idea exists. And there's just something so amazing about being in the belly of that huge underground system and seeing that there's so much work going on behind the scenes and we were they let us in and you never know why do you so they let us in there <laughs> and so these guys come flying down from the ceiling on ropes and seeing the rigging team that worked on that I mean that chimney is well it's got to be a few hundred feet in the air all the way down and then there's all these service tunnels which just look remarkable they're so amazing to look at visually and they go from like one station to another you can walk miles underground where there's no trains and you know it's so weird it's like warm and dusty and they store all kinds of weird stuff there and in the old tube station there's old posters and kind of, it looks very sort of 60s 70s that tube station and then there's another one further along that is one of the original stations and it has like wooden walkways and the original escalators so that place was really magical for me. That was quite early on in my career. And I was like, oh, I just want to do this job forever. So yeah, <laughs> we're weird, but <laughs> it's fun. Aisha? Yes, I would definitely say it does take a certain amount of weirdness to us, right? Um, I was filming some place that was built, I guess, in the late 1700s. And it sounds like we all have a thing for the tunnels because to, when you go down, you know, you're, you're on the first floor, everything looks so nice and pristine and you're just looking at the architecture and it's so great. But there was something about the tunnels, the back door that you find and where does this lead to? Oh, that really leads to nothing. It's just a bunch of old walkways and tunnels that back in the old days that the rich will have their servants transport things through so that they didn't have to interface with the general public. And me, really? Yeah. That's fascinating. I want to go down and go deeper in. I want to take a look. Well, this is as far as we like to go, but is it safe? Yeah, it's pretty safe. You know, it's built of stone and different things like that. And you go in and see some of the most amazing architecture and how it's settled over the, over the years and what it still looks like. And I think for, for me, that became really interesting because you're thinking back so many years, hundreds of years ago, and then back to now and now we're we're in going into this whole underground area and just seeing a whole different life down there that you never would have thought would have occurred so for me I think that's the best is being able to go in those little tunnels and creepy little areas that you would never expect to be there yeah that, that is one of the cooler parts of the job is just to <laughs> see, seeing what's behind the curtain and, and getting to go in and have all that much how much fun uh, well, one of those uh, things you need to have too as a good location scout is that curiosity. I, you know, you talk about people skills and all that, but you really have to be a curious person, I think, to to really 
to explore and to go the extra mile to find out what's down this hallway or behind that door or around the corner. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank the panel for being part of this. And uh, thank you all very much for watching. This was the Location Managers Guild International panel. And we really appreciate San Diego Comic-Con International for letting us be part of this again. <laughs>